Hello everyone, it's Love here and today we will do something that was never done on this, on this channel before. We will actually make a very short, concise intro. So <laughs> we will go through right into the gameplay. So this is a Demir control deck. I wanted to make something that has chance in Mythic and I think we did pretty well because we went over 50% win rate in like top 300 Mythic with this and I'm proud of the results. I think it's something fresh, it's interesting. Before you craft the deck. Rarity Trip is probably not the... it's probably the junkiest of cards here. I use it because I like it and I wanted to make deck with it. Uh, but you can just use two drop and if you are short on wild cards don't risk it. On the deck we are much more of a tapped out control. We create creatures, we do stuff during our turn because this type of control seems to work better. And as a sweeper we have Silex and Drag to the bottom as a card we have Kaito Shizuki and Reality Chip on top of Celestus. Of course, classics like Invoke Despair and Kotose. And Inventive Iteration, you will see in action, this might be a little bit underrated card that is actually really strong. Uh, and you will see it in the game, so you can judge for yourself. And the big idea for the deck is getting a lot of life gain, because we have four matches and we have Shorded and Celestus. So we can heal quite a lot to give us time to sweep everything. And with that being said, don't forget to subscribe, tell me if you like the short intro for the ones, and enjoy the games! Alright! Man, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm so scared that we are also on the draw. Man, this will be this will be painful or epic. One of the two. Uh, on the bright side, we definitely have a lot of untapped lands, so everything will be played on curve. We also have some bounce spells, so as long as our opponent does not have like insane draw, and I think they are playing like humans. I don't think it's an aggro. I think they have more colors splashed. We just don't see it yet, but you never know, you never know. Well, this turn definitely did not feel great, definitely. So I'm making a stop to pretend that we have make this appear or something. I don't think it will work too well because our opponent will see that, you know, we don't have priority otherwise. But we'll try to make it work. Man, when you start making those stops, you actually don't super... How do you say it? Like, it's not super hard. Like, you, you, you get some practice and it goes through. And this, I think those stops look like natural instant. I'm not exactly sure I never, like, cross-checked, but I think that's the closest you get. Not sure why he's thinking about the attack. It seems pretty obvious that that's a good option. But we are still showing that we at least have some place, so next turn maybe he will think about it. But to be absolutely fair, like we are playing Silex, right? So <laughs> it's a bit different. Silex is not perfect against uh, Guardians, because you cannot activate it at an instant speed, of course. So you cannot tap them before they attack. And in the end, they have Indestructible. Yep, he's trying to enlist. However, we can play our shorted and that will make things much harder for our opponent. We can also just bounce one of the creatures. Not sure what this is. Man, shorted is pretty nice, isn't it? Yeah, if that's Valorous stance, I'm literally rage quitting. And you cannot really tell. No, 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 no. Just go, aw go away. Don't touch my stuff. Kira, stop it. Oh my god. So, it seems that the correct... Yeah, the correct play would be this one then. In retrospective. I guess I should not play, but the, the point is that he missed a land drop. So if we just don't do anything, we basically miss, miss opportunity. Of course, once in a few games they will just have perfect answer. But I still think that the play was okay. And actually, the fact that he has so many cards benefits him. So I think we need to change gameplay just a little bit. And go with the iteration. Like, that will help some something a little bit. We won't be able to sacrifice Silex. This is kind of combo, but not really. 
Yeah, that's great. <laughs> great commentary. The point is you can uh, get rid of Silex, sweep the board and you get it back next turn, but you cannot do it any, at the instant speed, of course. But this is actually pretty nice. So we are really incentivized to just go with the Silex this turn. He will get 3 damage, but that's it. Uh, and the Guardian won't have anything on top of it. And we can just go for 3, right? And we can play new Silex, so I kinda like what I'm seeing. And let the Silex stuff begins. And next turn we will get a creature which makes it even better. We can start even drawing cards with Kaito. Yeah, we will definitely just play Kaito, right? So we can start drawing. Is, is that good? I think it's good. I'm not uh, entirely sure. Because having Silex... Okay. This is definitely not what I expected. What the hell he has in the hand? I mean, bro. If that's what you think about, like, sure, I will have my Silex one way or another. I think he coped. Man, it's weird. I don't think there's a word when this is the correct play. I think saving Guardian was super important and just, he just didn't do it for some reason. Alright, uh, leaving Breakthrough is absolutely amazing here, in my opinion. He will get one counter. I guess he can get the Scry, right? So there's a good reason to just go... Yeah, okay, 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 okay. I think we are doing it. Yeah, I like the idea. So, we go for two. We don't kill our stuff, we kill only his stuff. So that's super cool. I always like killing only my opponent's stuff. What the hell? Man, it's going on there. And let's play Celestus because we are at 7 and we definitely want to cycle stuff. The point is that now he cannot cast anything at, at 3 mana value. And I think we have enough lands for now, so yeah. 6 should be plenty. Like we can play Kaito and switch Celestus, so that's a big deal. So let's hope for him that he has something that is not 3 mana. Okay, that makes much more sense. So that was the play, he really just wanted to get rid of the stuff. However, how do we do it? Which card do we prefer? I kinda like Adeline. I cannot play her. Oh, I can! Oh, <laughs> I like Adeline. Can we win with her? Can we win with Adeline? Alright, that's a good question. We could also do... Oh my god, I'm such a dummy. Man, I have answer right in front of me and I'm just not using it for some reason. I like Destroy Evil. Now you will see how it hurts. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, that was the one-off in the whole deck. Alright, so what is the deck? If you want, you can pause and basically copy his deck. <laughs> one of the uses for Kotose for Serra Paragons. That will, is definitely something. And Valor Stance and Qatar. So definitely a thing. However, however, I will gladly get rid of this. It also means, man, this is so powerful when you see their hand. Uh, I cannot play a 3-drop this turn, but Valorous Stance is no, not doing anything, at least on this turn. And what? He will attack, so let's, make, let's not make attack. Man, this leaving Breakthrough actually dictates the full game so far. Let's see what he does. Interesting choice, because now it means that we get it back with full value if we ever kill Qatar. And he still cannot attack, right? What he might do is attack with everything and kill Celestus, but it means he loses the Brutal Qatar, so I'm not sure if he really wants to do it. Alright, do we cycle with Kaito main phase? I think we do. We definitely have a little bad draw. We need something that is not around. Perfection! That's actually very important. And I don't need land, you know? I mean... Alright, but... <laughs> okay, we have Brutal Qatar. Maybe actually let's not do it. You know what is the best play possible? This. I just realized he stepped out. 
It means that he cannot use Valor stance. And I enjoy my free value. Now we get another Silex if we want. <laughs> oh, that's glorious. We could also bounce our own Kotose and just get an Exile effect again. But I don't think that's the, that's the play. I mean, one damage to four. We don't need it. So, as you can see, Brutal Qatar, not the best against this kind of card. I, th I think he was just fearing that we block block absolutely his place. Alright, sure. So that's Valor's stance, and basically he has no creatures that can ram the initiate so far. We have Kaito, we have Celestus, and we will have creatures soon. Also we draw a dab hit, so we basically will draw three cards in total. First, that's a really good card. Second. And I think the third... Yeah, let's just do this. If we draw a sweeper, so, oh, he might have, oh, oh, no, 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 please, please don't submit, okay. So I didn't uh, discard Celestus because I thought that he might use initiates, but we can absolutely see that's not the case. I probably should have, uh, normally if I was off camera, I would check his full deck, but of course it would take a while, so, you know, we don't want to bore you. However, I don't think he can kill Sheldad. He had only one destroy evil. Uh, he already used Valor stance. I don't think they play much more. It's probably just uh, the Brutal Qatar. What can he get? Um, okay, so it's pretty easy what he will get. I think we can, we can actually go full value next turn. Uh, there was no way to kill Paragon before he casts something, but you know, you know how it is. Yeah, and I want to cast it at dance step probably because then we can flip day night time and that's pretty epic. Uh, let's go for four because that's enough to kill this. He stepped out. Also, the guardian is not super scary because he has only one card. We are back to twelve and it will be higher. So I don't think we are we are fearing at all what's going on. And guys, I think we just outplayed uh, top four hundred with this deck. I'm quite frankly impressed <laughs> not gonna lie i'm impressed and we can start attacking with charlotte right now like best he can do is four damage so he he pretty much cannot block and we we are at 14 so we don't care is kira right <laughs> oh getting destroyed by living breakthrough this card actually contributed so much to the game it's not even funny even the blocking, I think he was just scared that we can block his place every single turn, especially after we see the uh, the hand. Man, actually Duress would be so nice, it's just a bit risky, you know? So, Kaito draws cards, so that heals us, and leaving Breakthrough blocks whatever he wants to play. And we can also, yeah, three, three drops, not anymore! Man, that's so epic! And let's make sure that if he draws another Paragon, he has a, a lot of those. Let's get rid of Brutal Qatar. I made a mistake. If you know which mistake, you are the pro. Because we should switch with Celestus first before playing Trespasser and we would exile additional card, which is a huge deal. I messed it up pretty hard, to be honest. That's a huge deal. Uh, however, this disables all the Brutal Qatars. So, as you can see, I just lost the trigger for no reason, because I'm a dummy. And that's why we play Celestus, because we basically have infinite land draw. We are not playing anything, we need to cycle all of them. And with Kite and Celestus, we will have occasion to do it. So, our opponent cannot play a 3-drop. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Of course, our opponent is a master of magic, and he basically draws the best card of his deck right now. It's fine. We still can make it work, but it definitely is harder. He's at 11, so if he just keeps attacking, like you know, it's not perfect and we can always trade against whatever he has. The counters are a problem, because they can kill Living Breakthrough next turn. So, alright, that's a lot. So he attacked like this, that's an interesting choice. Oh man. Do we just take it? Nah, I think we need to block. Kaito is really important in this situation. Yeah, I think this is the play, but you can see this draw was absolutely epic for him. Probably the only card that would save him in the whole deck. 
but we also got good cars, you know. We draw three, he draws one, but we won't go into details. <laughs> I mean, yeah, let's just do the thing. How the hell are we at 22? So now he cannot play two drops, which is already super cool. And you know what? That's a lot of damage. I could attack with everything, and to be frank, it's probably the correct play, but where's the fun in it? And did we play two spells? Probably not. So let's switch. Now we got card. At some point, Lance will end. I promise you that. And we can block one drop. You know what? I can't... Uh, we need to exile something. You know what? I will do it. It's just so fun to block all the plays for my opponent, so he cannot... Take... Oh, it's converted mana cost three, right? So he can only play one drop. I uh, absolutely knew about it. So right now he needs a one drop or four drop, four drop. Other f oh, he does he clicked it. Like he doesn't like what he sees. He drew something that he cannot play, I think. Oh, that's so hilarious. <laughs> Trolling mythic every day with fun cards. I love it. All right, Kotose is absolutely brutal of course we discard this one this one has cycling naturally if things go wrong all right i know you guys want it i know you guys want it so let's go for reality chip i still remember this one comment that said man i wanted reality chip and there was i mean i mean i will draw it <laughs> living breakthrough into reality chip against Again, meta deck. And I would love to start with this hand. It would be so much better. Let's see what we are against, because I don't know La Touriste. I, I said it like French, but in English. <laughs> I mean, we don't have black cards, so March is not really an option. So let's start with the blue mana. Uh, is this enchantment? It seems to be. Like, so far, it, it fits enchantment. So, I mean... I mean, that's a reality chip. Easy. Give me reality chip. Because I want to see my top decks. Like, it's funny, but it actually helps when you exactly see what's going on. I kind of like it. Uh, I, I don't know what I play against exactly. I assume this will be something with a lot of tokens and something that benefits from tokens. So even if you have zero idea what's up, it will be something that pumps every creature somehow. <laughs> Either this... Okay, I got scared for a second. Just don't kill my reality chip, bro. It's the coolest card ever. Just go away. Nice. He he listened. Alright. So next is shorted. Okay, so it means we know exactly the next play. If we want it. If we want it. But you know what? I think this is... Oh, it's a legendary creature. It's fine. Sloth. Learning the game as always. I mean, I will play Celestius. I don't want to waste this turn. Uh, if he has two mana, I think the worst drop will be three drop. And I think we can live with, with this. Uh, I don't see Rafin mana, so I'm not super scared. I'm not super scared. And when we play Shorded and it survives, we can start basically drawing stuff. Sure, bro. Like, this is the most he can do right now, and it's not super scary yet. Broker's Ascendancy, like, that could be the thing that he uses. Or the three mana, like, Queen thing that buffs tokens, like, things, the King Darian, things like this. I expect something that will buff all of them to 2-2. Two -two. But it means that next turn we just untap and kill it, whatever that was. Or just bounce it if we want. But to, frankly, killing it is much, much better. Sure, that is also pretty strong. Man, Boseju, punished. That's, that's one of the reasons I lately don't like double legendary lands. You need to really evaluate how often do you use it. Oh, what a shocker. Uh, I mean, we cannot really kill it yet. So we will definitely just block to prevent some damage. Like, this is one of the reasons the card is here. If that had two toughness, that would be a bit better. All right, in retrospect, maybe 
I should expect some big creature and that he plays a land and clear the board for sure that maybe that would be a little bit better you know to be absolutely fair with you guys we can play this but he, he will just man he, it means he doesn't have the way to replay it but it's still show that show that is a good card <laughs> not gonna lie and he kinda needs to do something about him also we got dragged to the bottom on next turn so it's minus three minus three on everything so it means that even if he deals with shouldered uh, we just clear the board next turn to zero and our stuff survives so it's one-sided sweeper so pretty pretty epic in all honesty and that really helps man i like reality cheap it sometimes feels that maybe it doesn't do super much but the fact that we can play our basically plan our full turn is already nice and it also means that you never whiff on value as long as you have other creature so quite a lot of value in all honesty and right now he cannot really attack so king darian cannot attack because we just kill it it means that he can attack with those four creatures one of them dies oh he he really likes to be aggressive he has one green mana like there is a giant growth and stuff like this but I will risk it. If he has it, we just drag to the bottom. Like, it's not in the standard, I guess, right? I, I have no idea, okay? Nobody uses it. My turn. Easy. So... <laughs> oh, you know we have to do it. Oh, it feels so good. It feels so good. <laughs> perfection. Definitely perfection. Yeah? I'm all... I, I think we deserve this one. <laughs> Oh, the perfection is here. We still have March, and we know that next turn we will get invoked, but we don't have one black mana. So, not perfect match, but I don't want to generally play more tap lands. You can, you can play more tap lands if you wish, but I prefer to just play our threats uh, on curve and just wait maybe one turn for invoke despair, because we usually have other things to play. So, we could get rid of it if we want by exiling card, but why when we can just... Uh, do I want my HP on upkeep? I don't really care, to be frank. <laughs> I don't really care. I even prefer it this way. And you know what? That seems like a perfect play. So we bounce the creature. Easy. Now he needs to replay it. We got the show that, and now when he replays, he's actually behind, because we are getting every chapter, every turn. He is getting hit by Shorded, we are getting healed. And like right now, playing this is absolute garbage. <laughs> and he will still do it, which really uh, says that he's in a bad spot. And we just start killing it and healing, so it, it will only get better from our side. And if I really wanted, I would just kill it. And main phase, I would re use Reality Chip to start playing stuff, but. I just don't super care, you know? I think it's just better to play like this. And uh, this is okay. You know what? I think that's really good, because we exiled the Luminarch. I don't need to kill him super fast, because we can just kill it and get short it and deal two extra damage. But you know what? To be frank, let's be honest, like, if we do it, he just scoops. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah, and that will be faster. So I think this should be our win. I'm pretty proud of this one. Uh, kinda. Kinda. His, throw, his start was slow, but Rarity Chip quite tanked for the damage, and sure, that definitely helped with the rest. And we always had removal, so if he was more explosive, we would just hold our, our mana back and kill whatever he plays. And suddenly, we are the aggro. And you know that we will do the thing that you want us to do. So let's go with reality chip. Let's reconfigure. Still trolling mythic as usually. <laughs> with reality chip now. <laughs> it's epic, okay? Land. Can you see the value? That's what won us this game. So I mean, uh, we probably could just kill this. Alright, so let's be responsible gamer. Uh, we deal damage somehow. Now we play this. We exile one card. Not sure which one. 
Let's go for invoke. We kill this one. It means that this dice he cannot block and that's an extra damage. We also prevented him casting spells after he dies. So that's an extra benefit. <laughs> oh well, it, it, it kind of works everything, you know? Yeah, it, it was a good game. Uh, I actually wanted this one. So yeah, nice game, nice game. I think we really deserve this one. This game, let's try to draw lands and be a great magic player. So definitely a hard one. Uh, we don't have triumph, so drag to the bottom will be minus three, minus three so far, but with March I think we have enough time. I don't really want to show March. But you know what? After consideration, I should. I think I should. And this will be a rough one. A rough one. We might want to kill the creature that will come. It will be a tree tree, most likely. But let's see which exactly creature it will be. Well, this one is pretty strong. However, we might kill it as well next turn. Yep, because we didn't really draw anything. Uh, we can also drag to the bottom, like so far it kills everything, right? And we need to get value somehow. If he, he plays Reckless Stormseeker, I just don't kill ever anything. I think. If he doesn't... Sure, easy. So this turn will definitely hurt, but I hope that from the next turn onwards we can make it work. That will be so much damage. But everything has three toughness, so we are a bit lucky, to be absolutely fair. And let's drag them to the bottom. You thought we have no sweeper in the mirror. We do. It just sucks. <laughs> but it was close enough for this game. But definitely, if they played something with 4 toughness, it would be rough. So my my idea right now is to play Shorded and just try to survive. This is really brutal. Uh, because we are at 7, it means that we are very close to dying. Of course, Swamp first. And I mean... It would be better to march, right? He might kill us this turn. And I don't want to go into night time. There is an argument to just exile Shouldred. He has one card. Yeah, we don't lose the game, I think. What is the worst that can happen? Raiju. So this will be what? Well, Raiju is pretty scary. Okay, let's actually count, because this is where the game is won or lost. If he plays Raiju, he will have this 3, 2, it will get a counter, so 4, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, so 10 damage on the board, and we get burned for 1, so if we block the biggest one, we get hit for 6 and we die, but it's fine, okay, I just figured it out, man, I'm silly, why did I think that we need to choose anything? We can just do all of this <laughs> on the same turn. <laughs> because if he plays Raiju, we can use uh, March. Alright. This will be kinda annoying. I mean... We could just kill Halana and Alina. But we need to exile a lot of cards for it. So let's see what the target will be. I hope it's Pack Leader, but it's not. Alright, Reckless Storm, oh, both hit this, okay, that's a big deal. So this will be what? Exactly 5 attack. Man, do we actually, maybe we just, oh my god, we just take the hit, right? It's 3, 5. I think we just take the hit. No, 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 okay, 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 okay. I think I'm getting slowly to the realization what to do. We also heal too on the on the upkeep. Yeah, like we start to have options right now. We won't be able to cast uh, Invoke the Spare right now unless we draw Swamp, so let's see what we draw. All right. We definitely play Land then. And we should play something main phase then. I think this is the play. Let's go for 5. 
We could also just kill this, but then he pumps this and whatever next will come, so it's, it's just kinda lame. We have double show that and that gives us much more options than he wants us he wants to give us. And moment we hit invoke on the empty board, it should go well, but it's super close actually. Like this Harana and Alina definitely did not help. And this is super strong already. So let's see the counters, but it will be brutal. And we have to block. We have to block because we will die otherwise. We die anyway. Well, that was enjoyable. Alright, we are going first. Uh, we have pretty decent opening. Uh, when you see Trespasser and something else, like we've dragged to the bottom, we have full control and we should be able to cast Shrouded on Curve, which is pretty amazing. Our second turn, of course, is a bit slow, but we will definitely uh, get around this. Well, Trespasser is really strong because it's hard to remove, so if they don't counter it, never mind. <laughs> Theoretically they might not have it, but then you just play Kaito next turn and you already draw a card and it's so hard to remove Trespasser that they are always at card disadvantage basically. So let's see the play. Well, that is definitely a play. Uh, it is good for our opponent, but it also means that Shordat has basically open field and we will definitely try to use this slot. And we are... oh! That's interesting, but that's not really the type of card you want to bounce. It's much better to go Fable or something like this. But definitely a card that might be useful during this game. It has flying, right? Yeah, it has. So that means no Infernal Grasp, I would guess. Uh, if he attacks, unfortunately, we don't block, because it might be something like Voltage Surge. Like, he has only 3 mana. Man, the Taplands are so, so harsh. Like when you play Tapland, or your opponent plays Tapland and suddenly instead of 4, yeah, play it. Yeah, exactly, that's the perfect target. But to be absolutely honest, guys, we have to do it, like there's no other option. This is how the game works. And just like this, you don't have to invoke this person in the deck. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, I feel absolutely bad by removing all of those cards from the game. <laughs> oh, look at this side. It's beautiful. Alright, so do we want to attack? Uh, not really. He's really incentive. Now we know exactly his hand. Uh, so we cannot block because a braid will kill our thingy. And we like our thingy. He cannot really play uh, for all the mana because then we invoke the spare. And he doesn't have a way to kill Kotose right now. So a lot of things going okay for us. He discarded those. Ooh. I'm, I have a good feeling about this guy. <laughs> Guys, you, you know we will invoke him next turn. He discarded Mike Disappear. That's a big thing. And that's a weird choice, honestly. I'm not sure if that was the correct one. He's still leaving the mana for Mike Disappear. Theoretically, he could draw another, but I will still risk it. Like, the chance is pretty small. And also, we want to make sure that we use the free card. So, I mean, like, we will just do it. Invoke the spare. I heard you like them. <laughs> Best deck ever. I'm definitely not clapping right now to myself. Alright, so... It went through. Our opponent has no invoked of spares. His board is weaker than ours, and he cannot even kill Kotose. We could force Lifar right now. You know what? This is pretty good, right? I'm not super scared about his attacks. I guess he can double block, but it means that Harvester will die. And he really wants to keep it, so he can remove something sooner or later. And the something being shorted generally. So he takes 4 damage. That's, that's when you know you made a good call. When your attack just goes through because you evaluated the, the value of each creature correctly. And it's not worth for the opponent to do anything. And sometimes it's easy to just miss it. So if you want to maximize you know, the win rate, always think 
would you trade in your opponent's shoes? And if that means no, that you wouldn't draw uh, trade, it means that maybe you should attack and get free damage. Very often you will win due to this extra damage. For example, this way. Painland killed our opponent because we attacked with Kotose. And that was it. And I enjoyed this one so much.